Welcome to another episode of Game Tape with Tony. As always, I'm your host, Tony Ferrari from the Hockey News. And today I'm pleased to be joined by Brandon Wheat Kings co-captain, Nate Danielson. How are you doing today, Nate? Good. How are you doing? Not too bad. Happy to have you. It's going to be fun to get to know you a little bit and break down some tape together for uh, in a little bit. But let's start with how you got started in hockey. Who got you into the game and, and where that kind of happened? Uh, mostly just my dad, my brother. Um, my dad played growing up, so um, he always loved the game. And then I got an older brother who's two years older than me. And I sort of just started skating because that's what he was doing. And I mean, I just wanted to be like my older brother, I guess. And um, that's how I sort of got skating. And then just kept on doing it and started to grow a lot for the game and sort of as well all from there. Now your brother's obviously played in the WHL a little bit himself. He's in going to the U sports route, going to the Western university in Ontario next season. What kind of impact has he had on your career so far? Yeah. I mean, it's, he's had a really big impact for me. Um, just sort of having him growing up as an older brother. Um, he was always bigger and stronger than me. So I didn't win a lot when I was younger and, uh, he seemed to come out on the winning side of it a lot, but um, just having him has been awesome and just sort of someone to lean on. And I mean, he understands everything that uh, I go through and um, just sort of good to have someone like him for advice and stuff like that. Now you played on a brand weekings team this year where you guys came up a little bit short for the playoffs. What have you been doing to keep busy since the season ended? Yeah, uh, obviously the season didn't go as we planned, but um I think I took a week off and then just sort of got back at her. I mean, it's a bit going to be a busy summer, so just sort of try to take advantage of the time at home and um, time in the gym and get get as much time there as I can. And then um, as well, just spend time with my family and um, haven't been with them too much, so just spend some good time with them. And then um, golf courses just open up here, so uh, I get out there as much as I can too. Now, you led the charge offensively for the Weekings this season. You had 78 points. Did you set a statistical goal for yourself, and, and did you achieve it, or was that just kind of going into the season and just hoping to have a really good year? Um, I mean, going into the year, not really a, a set number or what I wanted to get or anything. Um, I kind of wanted to sort of be around that 80-point range was sort of um, a goal, I guess. But I didn't really – it wasn't really anything that I was ever like, oh, I got to get to this point or whatever. Um. I had more sort of set little short-term goals uh, throughout the year and um, just sort of set goals through different segments and stuff like that. Now you're the co-captain with Nolan Burke this year. What went into kind of being named captain? What did you take away from that honor? And, and just how did you deal with the pressure? Uh, I mean, yeah, obviously being named the captain is pretty special, and especially with the Wheat Kings. I mean, uh, if you just look at the recent captains and – um, the captains they've had in the past it's a pretty cool list to be a part of and um, so obviously it's a huge honor to be able to be part of that list and then um, I mean I think I've always sort of been a leader ever since I was younger so um, I mean nothing really changed for me I sort of just stayed who I am and just was myself and um, tried to lead the team the best I could. Now looking forward a little bit at your draft year obviously is there a player at the next level that you try to mod model your game after a little bit? Uh, there's two guys that I kind of try to model my game after. Uh, Nick Suzuki and Elias Lindholm. Um, they're both just skilled, 200 foot centermen. Uh, can play in all areas of the rink, and that's sort of how I try to play too. Now, hopefully, with this being a draft year, you'll be in the NHL in a few years. Is there a player you're looking forward to lining up against? Uh, I mean, I think anyone really in the NHL would be pretty cool, but um, I mean. I guess growing up, my favorite player was always Sidney Crosby. So I think if I ever got a chance to play against him, that would probably be the coolest moment for me and um, would be someone that I'd want to play against. Now, before we get to some game tape, can you give us a little bit of a self-scouting report? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I'm a skilled 200-foot centerman. Um, play well on my own in the rink and I'm mature and uh, play a responsible game defensively as well as um, – provide a lot of offense and dynamic and I think uh, I'm more of a playmaker than a shooter, but I think I also have that sniper sort of ability as well. All right. Well, let's get to the first little bit of game tape I have for you here. And it's a great play on the wall in transition. I think that's one of the strongest areas of your game is up through the middle of the ice. And then you make an absolute highlight reel play, pulling it through two defenders there before sniping it. What goes into a play like this where you're able to kind of do the dirty work and still pull off the nice move? Uh, yeah, we were down 3-2, I 
with like 10 minutes left in the game. So um, he knew he needs to get one there pretty quick and just sort of happened to get the puck on the blue line and be able to take a couple strides in and have some time. And I saw the defender sort of slide down to try to block the shot and was able to just pull it by and made a good shot. Now, one of the things I noticed with your game this year is that you've always had the responsible end of your game. That's never been a question, but you started to develop that more, that the higher confidence, the willingness to kind of pull off the skill move like this throughout the year. What went into that, just building that confidence? Um, I mean, I think just as I've gotten older and um, have gotten better, I've just sort of had more confidence and sort of, um, I guess, been willing to try these different moves because, I mean, they're not always going to work. So um, I think just guys like got older and being more responsible for a team, I think I've just sort of been able to try to pull off some of these moves like this. And, I mean, sometimes they work and they worked out pretty good. All right, the next clip I have for you here shows off that transition speed that I was talking about. You're so strong in transition. You're able to kind of cut up the ice, evade defenders, cut wide, and, and put the defense on their heels before scoring the goal here. Obviously, transition is such a big part in today's NHL. That speed and the game is just playing so much more fast. What goes into this aspect of your game? Has this always been an aspect, or is this something you've worked on? Uh, I think my skating has always been something that ever since I was young, um, I was fortunate to have my dad who would always work on my skating with me. So it's always been one of my stronger aspects of my game. And um, especially for the way that NHL is trending, speed is a huge part of the game and uh, continues to get faster and faster. So it's something that I continue to work on every summer and during the year as well to keep working on my skating and getting faster. Now, on a play like this, you, you, you're you so good through the neutral zone. I'm, I'm always curious about, if, is there something specific you're looking for from a defense knowing that you can go from blue line to blue line and enter that offensive zone with speed? Or or are you looking to just kind of take advantage of whatever they give you? I mean, there's a lot of little things that you can look for. Um, I think in this clip, I kind of caught the D-men a little flat-footed and he didn't have much speed and um, didn't have a great ga gap on me. And as I had a lot of speed coming from my own end, I think there's other things as well, like trying to get the D-man to turn their feet the wrong way. And um, if you go one way and they turn their feet, you kind of go on the other way. So there's definitely no subtle little cues, but at the same time, you sort of got to take what they give you. And um, on that play, I they gave me the outside lane and I was able to sort of beat them to the net. Now, you mentioned that you're more of a playmaker than a, a shooter, but you developed your shot a lot this year. What did you do in the offseason to kind of just develop that shot to make it a little bit more powerful, a little bit more accurate? I got a shooting tarp here at my house in my garage. So um try to be out there every day and have like 75 pucks or something. So I'll shoot a couple rounds of that every day and just um, work on hitting targets and work on different form and stuff like that, as well as um, being on the ice. Obviously, we got our skills coaches here that work on a lot of that stuff with us. So. Um, just those two things and obviously as you get older and get stronger your shot's going to continue to get stronger as well so all right this next play I have for you here is a similar play you're, you're bursting up ice with in transition enter the offensive zone you get the pass here and you make a nice play to the front of the net I think this is kind of the opposite of the last play where the defender kind of keeps you out wide but you're still able to make that pass to the middle when you're on a play like this, what are you looking for from that defender and what are you looking for from your teammates to know that you can make that pass to the slot? Uh, coming into the zone, I kind of knew Richie. We've done that play a lot where we go wide and hit the other one back door. So I kind of I kind of knew he was going to be there. And then um, I came to the neutral zone again with a lot of speed and um, I got a step on the defenseman wide and I knew that I would be able to get the pass across and I saw him there and uh, it worked out to go in the back of the net. Now you, you mentioned Richie, this guy that's obviously the co-captain with you on that team. What has kind of been your relationship with him? Like obviously a mentor on your team for you. Yeah. Ever since I was 16, he's been awesome to me. Um, his dad was obviously a big part of our organization and, um, he was the one who drafted me. So uh, ever since I got there and Brandon Nolan was always someone who uh, was really good to me and really supportive and always gave me advice. And then as we, as I got older and he got older as well, we really grew a good friendship and he's one of my closest friends now. So um, 
that I guess that sort of friendship carried over the ice and we were able to pull off some nice plays too. All right. Now your game is one of the, the people that or you have the game that a lot of people describe as really well-rounded. You do a lot of the little things right as well. And this plays an example of that behind the net. You make a really nice play just for a pass out front. These are the kind of things that oftentimes junior players struggle with. What makes it come so easy to you being able to pull off these little plays along the boards behind the net and in the areas that are, are a little bit slower to come for guys that are 17, 18 years old. Uh, Yeah. I don't, I mean, I think I've just always sort of, I've always been a playmaker and it's always sort of been what I like to do. So um, this play in particular, I get the puck behind the net uh, Highland dropped it to me and um, I sort of just faked one way and went the other way and uh, Pastor Neck sort of got lost and I found him back door and he was able to put it in. But um, I think it's just sort of always been something that I've excelled at. And I mean, I like to set up my teammates. So I try to do that. Now you talk about going one way and, and, and cutting back the other way, a little bit of manipulation there in your game. Manipulation comes in so many different ways on the ice and in the game of hockey. What are the kind of subtle little things that you like to do to kind of manipulate the defenders on the opposing team to kind of make plays for yourself? Um, I think what I was talking about before with the skating, um, trying to get D-men to go one way and then the other. I think I did on that play, did a good job of sort of faking like I was going to go to my backhand and take th- the net and um I think the the team sort of was puck watching and a lot of focus on me and I was able to go back up the other side of my forehand and um find the find our open guy but I mean there's a ton of different subtle little things like that and just where you place the puck and um you just stuff like that that teams can sort of get manipulated by and you can sort of take advantage of all right, this next play I have for you here. It's a nice little defensive play by you. You kind of do a really good job of filling the void defensively. The puck's getting out of the offensive zone or defensive zone, sorry, and you make a pass back. And then there's just a whiff pass and they get a chance. You're coming back. You make a really nice play here to cover up the pass and then get the puck up ice to generate an offensive chance. Your defensive game's always been something you've been pretty good at. What kind of goes into just having that defensive mindset for you? Is it the speed? Is it just understanding where to be defensively or what goes into that for you? Um, I think there's a couple different things. Um, I think one of it's just the understanding of the game. I've always loved hockey since I was really young. And um, me and my dad, we've always watched hockey. And I think just from a young age, I've always wanted to learn and get better at it. And then um, as well for the defensive game for me, uh, I I remember I, I used to and I still do. I I enjoy shutting down other teams' top players just as I like scoring as much as I like to score. So um, I think just having that effort and um, getting back in the right places and doing the right things just all sort of pays off for me. Now, with that defensive game, do you think that makes you a little bit more pro-ready, a guy that can maybe jump into the pro ranks, maybe not the NHL right away, but the AHL or something like that, a little bit sooner than some other guys? Um, I mean, everyone's different. Everyone has different games. and. Um, it's a big jump to pro and obviously the strength and the speed is probably the biggest difference from junior, but, um, I don't really think my game, it's something that will really help me make that jump. And, um, I might not always have my a game and, um, with that, I mean, scoring and, um, playing offensively, but I think I'll always have a good backup game. And if I'm not able to produce offensively, meaning that I can, always be able to provide defense and win face-offs and just little things like that that are so important in games. Now, you talk about the strength and skill of the defensive game being a big thing and getting to the pros. You show a really good job. uh, You do a really good job of showing that here where you kind of playing on the defensive end, you're able to kind of intercept that pass just by being a little bit stronger than the other, uh, than the Winnipeg guys player. And then you make a really nice play here in front to kind of get a pass across. Doesn't ultimately go in, but you make a really nice defensive play to start this, this shift out. When you go into these positions where you are in a in a physical battle like this, is there off ice training that you're doing, or is it just continuously outworking guys? I mean, it's definitely a little bit of both. Um, off ice training definitely helps a lot, just with your overall strength. But I think also having that compete on the ice and um, not being denied, and I think wanting the puck is a huge thing. And um, I think in a lot of battles, whoever wants the puck more is going to come out with it. So. 
I think that's a big thing for just those small battles like that. And as well as another thing is just p- positioning and uh, where you position yourself and being on the right side of the net and stuff like that. Now, the, the the NHL game, the pro game in general, so much of the game comes from playing good defensive hockey and turning that into offense like you kind of do here. Is that part of the mindset of your game where you, you want to play good defensively to create that offensive chance? Or is there any part of you that kind of wants to cheat a little bit offensively? No, I mean, uh, I think the better you play defensively, the more time you're going to get to play in the offensive zone. And um, In that example, being in the right spot defensively off – it led to an offensive chance. So I think that's just sort of the mindset I've always had and um, the style I've always liked to play. And just the less you can play in the defensive zone, you're going to be able to play offense more and play in the fun zone. Now, when I was watching your tape, this was this next shift was a really interesting one because you just kind of beat the defender down to the goalie, get the loose puck that wasn't quite handled well, and you make a nice pass in front for a goal here. Obviously, you play with speed that's exemplified here, but it's a little bit of the strength of your game as well. you kind of able to push off a guy like Carson Lambos, who's a strong kid in his own right, you get that puck from the goalie and then make a nice play to the front of the net. On a play like this, obviously, you're you're not necessarily thinking the goalie's going to mishandle it, but are you just trying to create havoc around that goalie to create a chance, or are you just trying to keep putting pressure on them? Yeah, I think the, I think the play actually – it was gonna with their thing it was gonna be calling icing and obviously i'm trying to beat the demon to the puck and be able to create uh an opportunity and i think the to start the play the biggest thing for me and thing that i've worked on a lot is with body position body positioning and in the clip i got in front of him and got on in front of his shoulder and i was able to out muscle him and get to the puck first and then i uh the puck was the goalie mishandled it and I it ended up on my stick and I came around the net and a lot of the defenders were puck focused again and didn't see the guy coming in back door so I was able to make a nice play to him now one of the nicest things about this play and I think it probably goes really underappreciated is we talked about your speed and that element of your skating ability but the fact that you didn't bowl the goalie over and absolutely destroy him in this play where you easily could have what goes into that aspect of your skating the edge work the ability to stop up and restart your skating stride I think just years of practicing it. I mean, it's always been uh, the biggest thing for me to focus on growing up was my skating. And um, I mean, it paid off. And um, I think just still just doing little edge work drills and just stuff like that really helps. All right. The last clip I have for you here is from early in the season. I think it's your second goal of the year, if I'm not mistaken. You just make a really nice play in the offensive zone to intercept the puck. And then you dangle the goalie, beating everybody off, uh, beating all the defenders off with a little bit of surprise and the speed that you have what goes into a play like this where you are able to just kind of jump at that chance that's generated yeah I think the how it started was the demon had the puck sort of along the boards and um I saw that he was making a play at the middle of the ice and I kind of just jumped it and I ended up taking the puck from bank here and um, the other demon was kind of caught flat-footed as he didn't really expect the play to be coming the other way and I just use my use my body to protect the puck and was able to bring it across the net and I mean that's a tough play for a goalie to coming in with speed and bring it all the way across the net and I was able to find the back of the net now that's all I have the video for video for you but let's get into some last couple hockey questions before we get into some of the fun stuff it's obviously your draft year and, and there's all these lists coming out rankings and whatnot how much do you actually pay attention to that coverage or is it just something you kind of keep out of, out of your mind during the season? Maybe now looking at it once your season's over. No, for me, I don't look at that stuff. I mean, um, everyone's going to have their own lists and um, I think I could be really anywhere for depending on how much they watch me or um, I guess whatever they like. So uh, for me, I don't look at any of that stuff and um, it doesn't really matter to me. I During the year, I sort of just, focus on hockey and that was sort of what was important to me so um I just focus on hockey and let that handle itself and then even now I don't really like to look at that stuff I and mean, sometimes obviously it's gonna pop up or you're gonna see it somewhere but I mean it doesn't really matter to me where uh people have me ranked or anything like that now the final hockey question I have for you if you're talking to an NHL scout and I'm sure you've started NHL interviews already at this point of the year 
if they when they ask you the question, why should we draft you? What's your answer going to be? I think just my compete. Um, I hate to lose, and I think that's a huge thing getting to the next level. I mean, um, I hate to move, lose more than I like to win, and um, I think that's probably the biggest thing as well. As I think I just have that complete two hundred foot game and. I'm able to provide offense as well as be responsible defensively. So um, I think I just sort of have the full package and um, that's sort of why. All right. Now let's get away from hockey a little bit. If you could compete in any other Olympic sport outside of hockey, summer or winter games, your choice, which sport would you choose? If I could compete in anyone, what would I pick? Yeah. Uh, and you don't have to have any experience in it. So if you're going to say like lose or something, just because you like that sport, go for it. No, um, I'll, I'll tell you summer and winter. I think for winter, I'd like to do snowboarding, uh, like the half pipe. Uh, I don't know why I just, <laughs> I liked watching it and, um, it's pretty crazy what those guys can do. So yeah, I'll be my winner. And then for summer I'd pick golf. Uh, I love golf, so I don't want to be able to play in that. All right, if you were sent to a desert island and it can only bring three things, what are those three things? Um, I'd probably bring flares in case I see anybody <laughs> to uh, signal them. And then um, a lighter and, I don't know, a knife. That's always an interesting question because there have been a few guys that are like, I'd bring a, a shooting pad and I'd bring this. And I'm like, guys, you're on a, you're on a desert island. What are we doing here? Like, you're yeah. surviving, not playing hockey. Yeah. Uh, all right. If you could put yourself in any fictional universe, any movie or TV show or anything like that, which universe would you put yourself in? That's a tough one. Um, like, what movie would I want to be played in? Yeah. Uh, I don't really know. I, <laughs> my favorite show is Suits on Netflix, so maybe I'd want to be in that. But I don't know. I also I really like uh, Kevin Hart and The Rock when they're together. So yeah. maybe one of those movies with those two together or something like that. So either a buddy heart, uh, a buddy cop movie with Kevin Hart and The Rock, or uh, Nate Danielson, the fake lawyer. I like that. Yeah, yeah, that'll be. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Do you have Do you have any hidden talents? Uh, no, nothing really. Um, nothing really surprising. Uh, what music are you listening to right now? My favorite music is country. Uh, I've been on that for a while now, and then as well as I like just like the normal pop and um, before games, I obviously I. Again, it's like the rap stuff, but just on a normal day, I'm a I'm a country guy. What's your go-to karaoke song? Oh, uh, maybe some Taylor Swift or something. I don't know what uh, song. I gotta yeah. respect the Taylor Swift. Yeah. Uh, what's what's a, a movie or, or TV show that you'd recommend? Maybe outside of Suits or, or uh, a rock movie. Mm. Uh, a TV show. Maybe do. I'm uh, I really like Ted Lasso. That's on uh, Apple TV. That's one that I've been watching recently, as well as uh, I think my all time one of my all time favorites is Prison Break on Netflix, and those are my two recommendations. All right, Nate, I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, this is a lot of fun. Good luck the rest of the way, uh, up to the draft, and hopefully, you hear your name called pretty early. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>